Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It's our 847th day together in God's Word, and day 847 brings us back to the book of Proverbs, and we're picking up today with Proverbs 23. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word and for the gift and blessing it is to be able to gather together and study your word day by day. We pray that you would write the meaning of Psalm 23 in our hearts, that we might walk in wisdom, and that we might glorify and enjoy you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs 23. When you sit down to eat with a ruler, observe carefully what is before you and put a knife to your throat if you are given to appetite. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. Do not toil to acquire wealth. Be discerning enough to desist. When your eyes light on it, it is gone, for suddenly it sprouts wings, flying like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a man who is stingy. Do not desire his delicacies, for he is like one who is inwardly calculating. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. You will vomit up the morsels that you have eaten and waste your pleasant words. Do not speak in the hearing of a fool, for he will despise the good sense of your words. Do not move an ancient landmark or enter the fields of the fatherless, for their Redeemer is strong. He will plead their cause against you. Apply your heart to instruction and your ear to words of knowledge. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you strike him with a rod, he will not die. If you strike him with a rod, you will save his soul from Sheol. My son, if your heart is wise, my heart too will be glad. My inmost being will exult when your lips speak what is right. Let not your heart envy sinners, but continue in the fear of the Lord all the day. Surely there is a future and your hope will not be cut off. Hear, my son, and be wise, and direct your heart in the way. Be not among drunkards or among gluttonous eaters of meat, for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and slumber will clothe them with rags. Listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy truth and do not sell it by wisdom, instruction, and understanding. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. He who fathers a wise son will be glad in him. Let your father and mother be glad. Let her who bore you rejoice. My son, give me your heart, and let your eyes observe my ways. For a prostitute is a deep pit, an adulteress is a narrow well. She lies in wait like her, like a robber, and increases the traitors among mankind. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaining? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Those who tarry long over wine, those who go to try mixed wine. Do not look at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup and goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. Your eyes will see strange things, and your heart utter perverse things. You will be like one who lies down in the middle of the sea, like one who lies on the top of a mast. They struck me, you will say, but I was not hurt. They beat me, but I did not feel it. When shall I awake? I must have another drink. Proverbs 23 ends with one of the strongest warnings against drunkenness in Scripture and something to be taken to heart for sure. But it opens with uh, three verses that I always makes me think of Daniel and his three friends from Daniel chapter 1. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were taken into Babylonian captivity, they decided that they were not going to eat the delicacies of the king's table. But instead, they were going to stick only to a diet of vegetables and water. And perhaps they had these proverbs in mind. We know that these proverbs would have been collected and spread around Israel probably for hundreds of years before Daniel and his friends were taken off into exile. 
And so maybe they, they were trying to be obedient to this word from the Lord here in Proverbs. But also it's just sound advice because when a ruler sets down delicacies, it's deceptive. He's trying to trap you. He's trying to ensnare you. In other words, when someone who's in a position of power or a position of authority is buttering you up, is serving you, is giving you blessings and benefits, there's always a hook. There's always a trap. There's always some agenda behind it. You know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. There's no such thing as a free handout from the government, etc. You have to be wise. You have to be discerning. And then the next section here talks about not working so hard to get rich. This reminds me of 1 Timothy chapter 6, where Paul warns against those who desire to become rich and they fall into a, a snare because the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. So there's nothing wrong with being rich, but if you're going to work hard and you're going to strive to achieve something, you should be working hard and striving to achieve something that's going to make a positive difference in the lives of other people or in, or in the world. You know, make a contribution. And sometimes that does lead to wealth, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you shouldn't be pursuing it uh, because wealth is fleeting and it doesn't really satisfy. Now, the opposite of someone who is a king giving you delicacies is a man who is stingy. A stingy man might invite you to share his delicacies, but he's not really wanting you to take. You know, you've had people make an offer to you to give something to you or lend something to you or help you with something, but you know their heart's not really in it. They kind of feel obligated. They kind of feel like they have to do it. And they're looking at you like, are you really going to take me up on this? Just, just don't is the advice. Just stay away from those kinds of people because they're always calculating and they're not really wanting to help you. They're not really wanting to serve you. And it's going to cost you something in the end. Just like the king and his delicacies, uh, the stingy man and his delicacies come with, with usually some sort of trap or some sort of resentment or some sort of anticipation that they're going to get something back out of you. Um, there's a warning here against abusing the poor. Do not move an ancient landmark or enter the fields of the fatherless for their redeemer is strong and he will plead their cause against you. God cares about issues of justice, issues of rightness, doing what is right, doing what is fair, doing what is what is ethical, what has integrity. Taking advantage of someone because you see an opportunity, that, that puts you in the category of being like the king who's offering his delicacies or the stingy man who's offering his delicacies or someone who's pursuing wealth. It, it puts you in that category of being someone who is using others for your own gain. We should never, ever be seeking to use others for our own gain. We should be generous and kind um, as much as we can. Um, jumping down a little bit, it talks here about the, uh, the blessing of having a child who is wise and who is, uh, who is following after the Lord. And, and that's certainly true. I'm blessed you know, when, when you're a father and you see your children growing up and you see your children loving the Lord and wanting to follow the Lord, there's very few things that are more rewarding uh, than that. It really is very, very encouraging. And then there's this warning against drunkenness that comes at first in this context of not wanting to be in the company of those who are drunkards and gluttons because they're going to come to poverty. And the reason why you don't want to be in their company is that that will rub off on you. You too will likely become a drunkard and a glutton if you spend your time with gluttons and drunkards. It's been said that you become like the five or six people that you spend the most time with. So keeping company, it's not that you can't reach out to people like that and show them the love of Christ and have compassion on them and help them. But if you are close friends and close companions with people who are living a foolish and wasteful lifestyle, it's going to rub off on you and you're going to fall into that, into that trap. What is valuable is not gluttonous eating or 
drunkenness. What is valuable is wisdom, is truth. Verse 23 of Proverbs 23 is referenced in one of my favorite books, Pilgrim's Progress. When uh, Pilgrim, when Christian and faithful are in Vanity Fair, they, they are being shown all these things that they can buy that the world has to offer, you know, entertainments and games and distractions and diversions and wealth and everything that the world has to offer is for sale there in Vanity Fair. And they're not buying anything. They just want to walk through and continue on their pilgrimage. And everyone's pressuring them. What are you going to buy? What are you going to buy? And finally, they say, we buy the truth. And everyone's really offended because that's the one thing you can't buy in Vanity Fair. You can't buy the truth. But the Proverbs say, buy truth and do not sell it. Buy wisdom, instruction, and understanding. You see, you could have a million dollars and through foolishness, lose it next week. You could have a nice new car and crash it. Everything's fleeting. But if you have wisdom, if you have truth, if you have understanding, that will help you to live a life that is in keeping with God's word and God's ways, a life that matters, a life that has a lasting impact. And, and you'll become one of these people who who causes those to rejoice around them. The father of a righteous will greatly rejoice. Your father and mother will be glad if you have wisdom. And then a warning against the prostitute and the adulteress. Not only gluttonous eating and drunkenness, but sexual immorality. All of these are like appetites of the flesh. Eating, drinking, sexual pleasure. It's all the appetites of the flesh. And those are a snare. Those are a trap. Those are slavery, really. Someone who is given to their appetite, who always, who always gives in to whatever they're hungry for or thirsty for or seeking after, they become a slave to their desires. And, and the final example that's given in here of someone who's really in that grip is someone who is a drunkard, who is just addicted to wine or beer or hard liquor or whatever, any intoxicating drink. It doesn't have to be just wine, of course. And anything that intoxicates this could go for drugs you know could go for lots of things the things that compulsively compel your life and they're not of god and they don't help you walk in wisdom and they don't bring you freedom addiction is slavery anything that grabs a hold of your life it could be being hooked on video games it could be being hooked on internet pornography it could be being hooked on alcohol or Whatever, anything that is controlling your life, is compelling your life, that's not the Lord, is not helping you to walk in wisdom and in righteousness and is dragging you down into bondage. And God doesn't want his people to walk in bondage. God wants his people to walk in wisdom. And so much of what Proverbs is telling us to do is stay away from those kinds of things. Gluttony, drunkenness, sexual immorality, the king's delicacies, the, the pursuit of wealth, wanting to become wealthy. Stay away from those things and instead set your heart on wisdom, truth, understanding, because that will lead to a fruitful life that will bless others. And that's the example that Jesus had. What did Jesus do when they offered him kingship? Let's make him king. He just walked right through them and walked away. What did Jesus do when Satan said, here are all the nations of the earth and all their wealth. All this will be yours if you bow down and worship me. He said, no, worship and serve the Lord your God and him only. He would not be turned aside. He would not be distracted. He would not be enslaved. And what's his call to us? What's his call to you and to me? Take up your cross and follow me. And that means we seek wisdom and we seek to live in the fear of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us life in your son, Jesus. Thank you that he never wavered from walking in wisdom, walking in obedience, walking in righteousness. Thank you that he has fulfilled all righteousness for us and for our salvation. Help us to walk wisely today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me for Proverbs 23. We are beginning a new book tomorrow morning. Hope you can join me for it. We're going to be starting Ecclesiastes. Wonderful book, challenging book. Looking forward to that. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Mm -hmm.